if I could go back and rejoin the Coast Guard or rejoin the military, these would be the things that I would do differently. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back military journeyman. If you're new to this channel, my name is Julian Sage Miata. I'm an active duty Coast Guard member and real estate agent in the DMV. My goal is to help you along your military journey by giving you the best military tips and money saving hacks. So subscribe so you can keep up to date. So I just wanna make a quick disclaimer that I am not saying in this video that I do not like where I'm at in the Coast Guard. Like I like my job. Uh, you know, I'm I'm super happy to have gotten to where I am right now. I've, you know, the Coast Guard through the Coast Guard, I've been able to meet my wife. I've been able to purchase this house. I've been able to you know start um, you know these podcasts, these shows, um, you know this Airbnb. I've 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 been really uh, blessed and successful because of the risk that I've been able to take throughout my time by being in the Coast Guard. So the Coast Guard has given me that the opportunity to uh, take risk and be, you know, adventurous because I always knew that the Coast Guard was was there. You know, it's like um, my fallback. Like I always say, like the military is kind of like that that girlfriend, like they, they don't want you to leave and they're always going to be there for you. And that, that's the Coast, you know, that's the Coast Guard to me. If I was to tell my friend, like who's coming into the military, uh, what are the things that I would tell you to do if you were to join the Coast Guard again? These are the things that I would say like, hey, you should you should try these things because they would probably make a very big impact on your career and your Coast Guard career and your personal uh, life. So the first thing that I would say would be going on a cutter. Now, I was at a land unit. My first unit was a land unit. My second unit was another land unit. So I had a different experience of the Coast Guard. It was a little bit more not laid back, but it was more not as adventurous. So on a cutter, you're going to be seeing more places. You're going to be doing more things. Um, you know, it, it, it is not everybody's cup of tea. And definitely there are lots of people that get on a cutter and they just hate it because it's very tight. Uh, you, you know, it's kind of like high school all over again. And um, it's a different atmosphere. It's a, it's a lot more, I feel like it's more military-esque. When you're at a land unit, uh, like a small boat station or an ant, the experience is a little bit more uh, like casual like you you go you do your job and then you, you leave and you're always kind of thinking okay well I've got to go back to work when you're on a cutter it's like 24 7 like you never really have time off um, which is going to give you a much different experience in the Coast Guard so you know even, even though I've never been on a cutter I think I would have liked to have experienced that when I first joined because now it's like, ah, I don't really want to go on a cutter. It's not something that I personally want to do. Like if I want to travel, I'm going to travel taking my leave or I'd rather just sleep in my own bed at home with my wife. But if I was joining the Coast Guard, I didn't have like those commitments. I didn't have my wife and I just wanted to experience something. Definitely, I would say go on a cutter. If you're trying to become a rescue swimmer, like that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to a land unit was to have that like pool time. Um, you know, that's something to consider, but uh, being on a cutter, um, you know, you're, you're going to be limited to the, you know, the, the workout equipment that's on your boat. Uh, you won't really be able to swim that much. So that is kind of a disadvantage for that if you are trying to pursue rescue swimmer. But I think now they actually have a program for rescue swimmers where you go to Cape May, you go through like this type of training program before they actually send you to the school. So um, it, it might be advantageous, like if you want to get that experience, but you still want to be a rescue swimmer, then you could probably do that. But um, that, that that's something that I would recommend for people that don't have those commitments, don't have those ties, and want to experience kind of a little bit more of what the Coast Guard has than just like land units. Number two is that I would have purchased a house earlier. So when I got to my second unit in Florida and I was uh, home with like my family, um, I was planning on purchasing a house that was about 40 minutes away from where I was working in St. Petersburg. I was going to purchase a house in Sarasota. But I was kind of scared into not purchasing the house because I didn't know about VA loans. And you know, the person that I was speaking with on the phone, I was like, hey, you know, I want to purchase this house, but I don't plan on living in it, um, you know, um, full full time, like I'll probably move there, but then I, I, can, I might want to use that to rent it out. And they were just a little like, no, you can't do that. You know, this, you have to live in this full time, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know like all, everything that I do now about VA loans. If I could go back, I would have purchased that house. I could have lived in it for, you know, a few months. And then I could have said, okay, it's a little bit too far from work. I'm going to, you know, live in St. Pete and then rent out that house. I could have done that. But because I didn't have the knowledge that I have now about VA loans and, and that whole process, 
I, I totally missed out on that. And I could have had a property. I could have been renting. I could have been doing Airbnb. I could have been doing so many different things had I purchased that house, had I had the knowledge that I have now. So kind of going off of that is, you know, use the tools. If you are interested in purchasing a house, speak with someone that knows this stuff. So like, you know, my kind of forte is a VA loan. So that's something that I'm very particular to um, because I, I do enjoy it. And I think that it's an awesome benefit, you know, probably one of the best benefits uh, aside from like the GI bill that the military has. So um, if that is something that interests you, you know, feel free to reach out to me and we can, we can talk about that. I'll probably make some more videos about the VA loan because I think it is so awesome. But um, yeah, I would have used that loan, purchased house earlier, and I would have, you know, been able to have this property now. Number three is I would have started YouTubing or documenting my journey a little bit earlier. Like I see some people that are joining the Coast Guard now that, uh, that you know, they, that they've kind of been documenting their progress of joining. And I think that's so cool. Um, you know, we're, we're in a different age, you know, day and age now where it's like, um, people are interested in like your history and how you've gotten like I've I've been documenting my process of starting an Airbnb um, you know starting different things and I think it's fun it, it's a way for you to be able to connect and look back and say like man this is where I started and now I'm here like so YouTubing would have been cool if I'd done that earlier I did it a little bit later like when I was about, about three years into my career uh, with the Coast Guard so um, but I think it would have been cool to see like my first unit going to, you know, going to a summer school, dropping out of summer school, being uh, re relocated to Florida. I think that whole process and getting the quals and that experience would have been a kind of interesting perspective that probably a lot of you guys would have appreciated. Number four is I would have gotten a Coast Guard mentor who's an officer, enlisted, and a civilian mentor. Now, the reason why I say this now is because I just recently, um, about probably about six months ago, I got my first Coast Guard mentor who was an officer because I was thinking about going officer. And man, that was so key because it opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't even realize in like the officer world. And it, had I done this earlier in my career, like when I first joined, like I think that this should be something that everybody should do. Like you join the Coast Guard, you get your mentor. Um, what usually happens is you, you, you join the Coast Guard, you get to your first unit, you have kind of like your rep who, you know, you kind of like go to for like your supervisor, but they don't really teach you that much. They're kind of more like a friend and like a supervisor type role. Um, but I think it's super important to have like mentors that like are setting goals for you saying like, what do you want to do? Are you trying to get your name on an A school list? Are you trying to improve your ASVAB score? Are you trying to go officer? Uh, that is really key and really important because that can really shape your career. It can open up so many opportunities like the resources that I got from uh, my mentor who's an officer uh, allowed me to be able to see like a different part of the officer world and get a different perspective. Uh, I think it's important to do it for officers, for enlisted, and then also for civilian because you don't want to just be, you know, strapped saying like, well, I don't know anything else. I'm just going to do the Coast Guard. I think it's important to have a well-rounded, you know, having different opportunities outside of the Coast Guard that, you know, so you don't feel pigeonholed because no one wants to feel that way. Number five is I would have applied for the Coast Guard Academy. So when I first joined, I didn't know that I could actually go to the Coast Guard Academy. Um, you know, I, I was on a different uh, trajectory, like I was going to rescue summer school and I was training for that. Uh, but when I got to my next unit and I was thinking, okay, you know, uh, you know, is, is this something that I really want to do is becoming a swimmer, something that, uh, is really in line with what I want. Um, you know, I was thinking of like, um, uh, the, the, what is it called? The C spy and, and OSC and, uh, or OCS. And, um, but I didn't think about the academy until I saw a friend of mine who we went to boot camp with. He was in the academy, and I didn't find this out until like I was already married. So there are some uh, stipulations like so you can go from enlisted to the Coast Guard Academy if you meet a certain criteria. So if you're a young guy coming out of college or coming out of high school, 18, you're not married, um, yeah, and you want to become an officer, you don't have to go to OCS. You don't have to have a degree. You can apply for the academy, and you know it is selective. But I feel like your chances would be a little bit better uh, because, you know, you have that Coast Guard background, you have that Coast Guard experience. So it's something that uh, you definitely can keep open and that I would suggest for people that are considering the officer route. You know, and you get all that education, you get that experience. Uh, I mean, the academy, they have some really good curriculum. It's, you know, it's mil it's a military school, but it doesn't have like you don't have to get the um who is it like the the political figures uh, endorsement uh, you know your congressman's endorsement or whatever it's something that is a little bit more laid back but you still have that military uh, bearing that military 
history experience. So I, I think it, it, you know, it's too good to kind of pass up type of deal. Number six is I would have started an Airbnb as soon as I got into the Coast Guard. Now, you know, I, I kind of practice this thing that I, I haven't had put official name on it until just recently, but I call it uh, housing allowance hacking. And basically what the whole concept is, is you have your BH and everybody who joins the, the military, who joins the Coast Guard, they all they all try to do this in a sense. There's, there's just never been kind of like a name to it, but you join the military and you, you're not getting paid that much. You're getting 30,000, you know, or I am uh, because I'm an E4 and I've been in for like six years now. Uh, but you, you, you get in, you're not getting very much money, maybe like $24,000, but your BAH basically doubles your income, your, your basic housing allowance, basically doubles it, and that money is untaxed. And in order to be able to um, really kind of enjoy a little bit more freedom uh, with, with your money, to be a little bit more not as strapped, you try to cut corners by saving your, your housing allowance, whether that's you know getting a roommate or if it's you know perch you know getting a place that is low rent and being able to split the difference, um, there there really is um, it, a big difference when you're able to save like a few hundred dollars. Like when I got my first place when I was in Wisconsin, uh, I think my my housing allowance was like seven hundred dollars, but I found a um, a guy who let me rent out his room and I was paying four hundred dollars a month, so I was able to pocket an extra three hundred dollars. Now. That three hundred dollars, I was able to save that. I was able to do different things. It gave me a lot more freedom to be able to, you know, save, invest, and do, do different things. Um, so if I had started like an Airbnb, and I, I know what I know now, I would have gone back, maybe gotten a bigger place that was closer towards the top of my housing allowance, and I would have just furnished that, furnished an extra room out, room or two, and started uh, house hacking that. Or I would have started doing rental arbitrage where I got a place and then I just rented it and then I got another place and I, you know, I sublet it and you could make some serious money doing that, being able to save your BH, maybe making a little bit more. Um, so if you're interested in Airbnb and uh, rental arbitrage and, and uh, house hacking, stuff like that, then I've got a podcast. That's kind of why I've got like the screen behind me because um, I do another podcast called uh, Short-Term Rental Success Stories and I've got another YouTube channel that I'm starting all about Airbnb and um, you know, my progress and my journey of starting an Airbnb and kind of like what's going on with that. So if you are interested in trying to save some money, make some money, um, passively or not really passive cause it, you know, it is a bit of work, but you can make it passive. Um, then definitely, uh, follow me on those channels and I'd love to be able to connect with you so we can be, you know, military, uh, money moguls or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, military journeyman, you know, we're all, we're all on this journey. Number seven is I would have started investing in TSP earlier. And, you know, so I didn't start TSP until like three and a half years into my career. Like I started way too late guys. Uh, as soon as you join the coast guard, start investing in your TSP. And I know it's tough. You guys aren't making that much money. You don't really want to, you know, you're trying to just save as much as you can, but it really makes a difference when you're putting in just like 5% and that compounding interest, you know, um, what, one of the greatest, you know, I think Warren Buffett says is like one of the greatest laws of the universe is, you know, the, the, power of compounding interest because you, the earlier you start, the less you have to put in to be able to allow that to compound. Um, so like just being able to put like five, 10%, you know, just something and allow that to kind of build up because the momentum, it, it starts to build on itself. It just starts adding and adding. And, um, you know, that's something that I probably would have uh, done earlier. Um, you know, something to consider. Now I'm doing the blended retirement system. So they match you. So I'm putting in 5%. They match me 5%. Um, I don't like putting too, too much of my money into um, TSP or like um, these things. Like I know a lot of people are like, put everything, you know, 65, 100%, you know, try to max it out. And yeah, I think that that's good. I think that there's a time and a place where it's, it is good to put as much as you can because of the tax advantages. But when you are on the lowest tax bracket and you're putting in all of your money and you're, it's not really making a difference on your tax bracket, um, you know, I think that money could be better well spent, you know, saving that, investing that in things like Airbnb, um, or other ways, you know, um, I think that once you reach a certain level of income, definitely, I think 
you know, maxing out your, your Roth IRA, being able to get those tax advantages to bump you down to a lower tax bracket, definitely something that would be good. But I think just starting off, just put in a little bit, you know, get get a feel, you know, play around, learn about the different funds, the L funds, C fund, G fund, all those, and um, get experience investing into uh, something that can kind of compound. And then when you're ready, you know, start looking elsewhere, maybe, um, you know, a, uh, a Vanguard mutual fund or something like that, that you could invest your money in elsewhere that isn't locked down by like the strict, you know, rules of like you pull your money out and then you get tax, 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 you know, you put it into a Vanguard mutual and you, you're pretty good. You know, you can take that out if you want. You're not getting penalized. Um, it, it's a little bit more liquid than if you put it into a Roth where it's like you can't touch it until you're, you know, 65, you know, six, 60 years old, you know, it's, I think it's kind of crazy, but uh, it does have its benefits. Hope you guys like this video. If you did, smash that like button. Let me know that you like uh, that you like me. Just let me know that you like me by smashing that like button. And if you don't like me, then um, smash my, that like button is also. I don't, I don't know what to say. If you like this video and you want to know more about saving money while in the military, check out this video here or keep watching right here. Until next time, guys. Peace out.